Well, it's now time to travel the Mississippi River and into Point Capi Parish. Our next stop, New Roads. French Canadian explorers led by Iberville traveled the Mississippi back in 1699. Thanks to a shortcut in their travels, they created the foundation of this settlement. Discovering and preserving history of the community of New Roads is a time-honored tradition. The family of New Roads native and author Brian Costello goes back 11 generations, and he's taken note of it. In fact, reams of notes. Brian, how many books on Point Capi history have you written? 16. 16? That's quite a lot. Well, there's a lot of water in the well. Um, <laughs> every day I'm finding out something interesting from the civil and sacramental records and old newspaper accounts that tell of the rich history, culture, and traditions of this community. Is there a lot of rich history? Oh, absolutely. Uh, back to the days of the French explorers in 1699, we've written accounts of life, customs, and genealogy in this community. How did New Roads get its name? New Roads uh, got its name from the New Road, which we are actually walking down. Right down here. Right. <laughs> runs from Falls River to the Mississippi River. Uh -huh. And it was opened about 1776 as a Camino Real, a royal road project of the Spanish authorities. So this new road is over 200 years old. A very old road, <laughs> exactly. Um, it's a shortcut between Falls River and the Mississippi River. And the French called it the Chemin Neuf, which is French for New Road. And if you look on the street signs in this part of town, the original area uh -huh. uh, that was carved out in 1822, you'll see on the sign Chemin Earth. Before we understand the history of new roads, it helps to understand the Mississippi River about 300 years ago. Back around 1700, this was the Mississippi River, but it changed course. And the current body of water here that is now cut off is known as False River. By the early 1700s, the new road that connected False River to the Mississippi River was the foundation to this new settlement. This was a, a huge trail for commerce? Right. Uh, well, of course, it was a dirt road. Um, until 1918, it was graveled at that point uh -huh. and paved in 1931. Uh, the produce from False River, like sugarcane and cotton, were brought from the Falls River plantations to the Mississippi River for export, and goods were imported down this road, such as uh, dry goods, hardware, groceries, other items needed for homes. Over the early years of the 20th century, the new road of new roads changed from a dirt trail to a gravel top, and then paved by 1931. And with the advent of the automobile coming down the pike, one of this town's cornerstone businesses was Satterfield Motors. O.J. Bellows' dad, O.J. Sr., worked there after moving his family in from Muncie, Louisiana. You know a few people in this yeah, picture. Yeah, I know. I, I, I know 90% of them. And your dad's in this picture. My dad's in the picture. What's your daddy do? Dad was an automobile mechanic. Yeah? Yeah, reboard engine and that. He was the only one that could read a Mike Ramos back then. Dad used to work late hours over here, you know, back then. Made, made, I don't think he ever made $100 a week. You know, <laughs> just, just no money, you know, but he was a dedicated employee. He was the type of person who would have broke in the place if they ever closed it down just to work. That's how much he was dedicated. Yeah. O.J. and wife Sarah's oh, yeah, family are right. just some of the newer kids, kids on the block. Their family dates back just three generations. We have eight children, so now we have 20, almost 21 grandchildren. So most of them live here and they're happy. I mean, it's an old town. They could go on the river and, and enjoy fishing. I uh, graduated from Portrait's High School. I got married in St. Mary's Church and my first job was in the courthouse. So I've been on the streets of New Roads for a long time. <laughs> but I'm glad we stayed. <laughs> How about you? Glad you stayed? Oh yeah, definitely. I, I don't know any place I'd want to live. We talked about moving in one time and then I walked, rode around looking for another place. And I told her, I said, you know what? I said, we'll never find what we have here. I got three acres of land, place belongs to me. I'm, you know, all my kids live here, so why would I want to leave, you know? Somewhat comforting to know that uh, you, you, you've had ancestors that have lived here for 10 and 11 generations, and that's, that's a long time. That's saying a lot. And you can say that for people of uh, North American Indian ancestry, you know? Uh, European ancestry and African ancestry. 
we've all been here that long, and that's uh, pretty interesting when you think about it. Over the past three centuries, it's not just the Mississippi River that changed course. The name of the town changed numerous times. This community went by the names of St. Mary, named after the town's first church built in 1823. It was also named False River, Louisiana. But by 1879, it was named New Roads for Good. The town's first Mardi Gras ball was held two years later. And the New Roads celebrations are the oldest Mardi Gras traditions in Louisiana outside of New Orleans. To many folks in Louisiana, this community has been considered off the beaten path. But these days, it is retirees making a new path for new roads as the number of waterfront retirement homes continues to grow. It's uh, being near the water here uh, for me, I guess, always. And it's, like I said, it's not essential I ever get on it again in my life, but it's essential that I see it every day. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a real sort of spiritual trip, you know, the sunrise and the sunset and the moonrise and the moonset. The natural beauty the traditions, and the family roots deeper than the front lawn live oaks is what makes this area a Louisiana jewel. It's an undeniable truth of this town that sits along the False River. New Roads population explodes each spring for their Mardi Gras parade there. Attendance records were broken in 2002 when town officials estimated as many as 70,000 people attended the festivities. 